This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. What's going on? It's Trip Young. We are back with another Quarantine TV edition of Real Fans Real Talk. The NBA Finals is among us. So, of course, we had to bring on our NBA expert, Scoop B. You like you? I think you are. You are like the you like the, that recurring guest that comes on all the time on the show. That's you. You like got the number one spot as far as all the guests right now. Um, but we, we need we need to talk basketball. But before we get into basketball, let me update the people because me and you talk, and I know things be about to happen. They be going down, but I can't. I don't like to say nothing. I like the people to be surprised. Just talk to us about what you got going on right now, school. Come on. So first and foremost, it's always an honor to be the guest in residence, the guest emeritus. You know, you go to colleges, they have, you know, like, the like you know, like, you know, Obama is during the previous administration. He was the president emeritus, you know, now, you know. But, yeah, so it's good to be, you know, the the, the, the guest emeritus on Real Fans Real Talk. So um, I uh, in May, I, I took on a new role uh, with Valley Sports Network, uh, which is as their digital NBA insider, uh, breaking news just getting paid to do what I already do and um, filing stories, making stuff happen. So you can check out all my work at Valley Sports Network. 19 of the 30 teams that are in the NBA are playing on Valley Sports Network. So um, it's it's a, it's a national job. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, we've been we've been through this thing from heavy to MSG networks uh, to, you know, myriad of other places and, you know, Valley Sports now in 2021. So, you know, um, that's that's what I'm doing now. Still do a uh, every Thursday. I do an Instagram live uh, with Porn Star and Sirius XM radio host Lisa Ann, uh, where we talk about betting odds for games. And um, yeah, we, we, we do a lot of different things and um, glad to uh, be here with you as always. Congratulations, uh, first and foremost, man. I love seeing my brothers winning out here, so congratulations on that. We, we might have to get into some of this uh, this betting stuff too, because I've been I've been I've been making some moves out here. <laughs> so I might have to come to the experts and see what the experts are saying right now, because uh, a couple I, I need to I need to get something going good for this uh, this NBA uh, Finals. Milwaukee Bucks, okay. uh, Phoenix Suns. It's, it's gonna be a tricky one because Giannis might not play. Hyperextended uh, knee. It, it looked crazy, but they they said that the test result shows no 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 real damage or anything like that. He's listed as day to day. Um, if Giannis does not play, do you give the Bucks a chance of winning this series? No, not at all. You don't think you don't think they, they got a chance without Giannis? You think we can get another twenty eight, uh, another thirty two point night from? From Brooke Lopez, Bobby Porter stepping up. No, it's over. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, uh, but you ain't got no hope for the. All right, so hold on. Let's go back for a second. Take it back. Atlanta Hawks versus Milwaukee. Now, I, I felt like even with Giannis going down, I still kind of thought that the Bucks had a better team. Then Trey, even if he if he actually came back, I thought that they should have still been able to win that series. Um, I think they just finally got brought back down to earth. Shout out to the Hawks, though. I think they had an amazing uh, run this season. But ultimately, I think they finally came across a team that was better than them. And even without Giannis, they got passed. Have you heard anything in regards to Giannis that would lead us to believe that he may actually play in this finals? No. Nothing, nothing new. Uh, I hate to keep giving you the word no, um, but uh, I have not heard anything uh, official or unofficial. Um, I, I know that uh, that that injury looked worse on camera than it did after he walked. Like, like the impact at first was like whoa, yeah. And then, then uh, you know, as you saw him kind of get up and walk and uh, go about getting to the visiting locker room uh, at, at State Farm Arena, you had hope he'd come back, but I think the Trey Young injury was was the catalyst in that series for, for everything. 
Um, and I think that the, the good thing that the Hawks had going in their favor in that game was that they had like what a 10 point, 12 point lead in the game without them. So, you know, the Bucks had to prove uh, that they could beat uh, the, the, the Hawks without Trey Young. They did that, uh, but the Suns aren't the Hawks. Yeah, and, not at all. Um, and, I, and I think that when you look at that team, man, you know, there were times where you may have questioned the, the uh, Clippers' ability uh, to make some things happen. As I said on your show uh, a couple months ago, um, that I felt that the Clippers had a chance uh, to make it, particularly with the addition of Rajon Rondo. Uh, but I think also when you look at the Bucks, the Bucks by far exceeded many folks' expectations pretty much because of that Brooklyn series and, you know, Kyrie Irving's injury. Um, and, and ultimately, um, when it came down to it, also um, James Harden's injury. He played 43 seconds in game one, and, you know, they tried to play catch-up. That security guard incident was a thing. Um, just a lot of factors that had nothing – well, some had to do with basketball, but many of it had to do with the negative negativity side of it, particularly with injuries and all those other things. But, you know, for the Bucks to get to where they are, you, you also have to commend them and, and, and give them their just due because, you know, they played in an Eastern Conference where uh, everybody – it was a foregone conclusion um, that um, – they thought it was a foregone conclusion that it was going to be Nets, Sixers representing the East and, you know, Lakers in the West. And, you know, I've, I've spoken to folks on a Western Conference team that feel as though – the Suns need to take care of their business because it's going to be all about Brooklyn and, and LA as in the clip, or excuse me, as in the Lakers next year, particularly with a healthy Anthony Davis and, and a healthy LeBron James and, you know, a healthy Kyrie Irving as well on Brooklyn side. So, yeah. yeah. This, I, I think this is the best chance that Chris Paul is going to get to win a ring outside of maybe if he had, you know, that trade that went through to the Lakers a couple of years ago. But other than that, this is the best chance he's gotten um, I you know I know people talk about the route that they took to get there, you know, pretty much every team missing one of their stars along the way. But you know, but I still say you you can only play who's in front of you. Um, and they got the job done. Is Chris Paul Finals MVP in this series? They got to play it first. <laughs> Hey man, come on now. They gotta play it first. They do. They do gotta play it. But but you, but do you think that Chris Paul? Because I mean, Chris Paul has done some amazing things in this playoffs. The way he closed out uh, the series against the, the the Clippers, an amazing night. Um, but the the best player doesn't always come up at, with the Finals MVP. I I, I know for for Chris Paul's uh, for, for his legacy, I think that it would be great. I think he would get a huge boost because because one one of the things we're going to talk about are the top five point guards all time and where a championship win puts Chris Paul all time. Um, but Devin Booker has been been playing very good for his first first postseason, and if he's averaging twenty eight, you know, five and five in the series, that might be hard for somebody to vote another direction. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of like that Iguodala situation, where you know, in 2015 he was the MVP, but he wasn't even the best player in the whole finals. It was LeBron, yeah, and you weren't giving it to Steph at that point. Steph got the award for the most beautifulest family in the world, you know, at that point. That was the whole <laughs> Riley Curry. Shout out to Riley Curry. Era. Yeah, so I, I think. You know, as, as it relates to Devin Booker, yeah, I think you're onto something there. But I also think that, um, you know, when you look at the Nets, excuse me, when you look at the the Suns, I keep saying Nets. When you look at the Suns. That's how you know I'm tired from all the writing I've been doing throughout the playoffs. But when you look at the Suns and just the the, the build up of their 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 team, I mean, it's not just Chris Paul, and I think that's what gets lost in translation. I mean. This this Suns team. Everybody talks about the eight straight games they won in the bubble, and um, you know. I use this analogy often, you know, uh, Booker and and um, Aiton, DeAndre Aiton, that is. Uh, He's playing great right now as well. We're part of a, a, a cake that was already baked. Chris Paul was the icing on that cake. And, um, you know, when you look at that team and what they've been able to do uh, and just adding Chris Paul to the puzzle, 
I mean, it, it, it was significant. As you saw my reporting last offseason, you know, the Sixers, uh, the Knicks, uh, the Bucks. you know, like it's it's I'll tell you, like Giannis had a meeting with the Bucks ownership uh, before he signed that extension. It was Labor Day weekend. And, you know, he had a list of names of guys that he wanted the team with. Uh, and I'll tell you that Chris Paul and James Harden were both on that list. And Harden nor Paul are, are on the team. Um, that they played with last year anymore. And uh, that's a whole different conversation as it relates to just the, the ultimate fall of uh, the Houston Rockets, yeah. uh, particularly with Daryl Morey now in Philadelphia, James Harden in Brooklyn, uh, Chris Paul in, in the NBA Finals representing the Suns, and P.J. Tucker in Milwaukee. Yep. Uh, and, you know, the fact that Tucker and Paul are in a finals appearance after leaving Houston, like that's a whole interesting story there. Um, but I'll add this specifically to your question. Um, I do think that the Suns have a good uh, team on paper. They also have the uh, the blessings of um, good coaching under Monty Williams, uh, and 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 his story is so significant mm-hmm. where he is, where he is now. And I remember, you know, at Bally, the first story that I penned. Uh, was actually about the Suns as a whole. And I talked about my lens and talked with people within, you know, that organization who, uh, meaning the Pelicans organization that, you know, they grew with them. Like most people, they all say to me the same thing. I don't have one bad word to say about them. Yeah. And um, I think that's significant specifically because um, in a day and age where social media and just relationships and everything, you know, that's interesting. I'll also add that his time with the Pelicans, you know, he, he wanted, um, Anthony Davis to be the next Bill Russell and play at the five in New Orleans. And, you know, Davis wanted to be that slasher th- three, four, five combo. And uh, I'm going off on a tangent, but just to see uh, Monty Williams and then even James Jones, I mean, a position that uh, he's in, I think it's, it's a great story and um, it's good to see. And that's, that's on both sides. I think if it's one thing I'm kind of disappointed about, I'm disappointed um, that the Hawks didn't make it because I like their story. I liked their um, nobody expected them to get as far as they did. I don't think many people expected them to, to beat the Knicks, and they did, and then to beat the Sixers, a highly, highly respected and coveted uh, franchise. And, you know, it, it's 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 great. But, you know, Milwaukee did their thing, and you got to give credit where credit is due. Yeah, especially, you know, winning them last two games without Giannis being there, you got to give them give them that. Um, I, see, I don't, I, with the th- my issue with the Hawks was, I think, you know, and I like Trey Young, but I think he was just doing he was doing too much talking to you know the shimmy doing all, like you know Steph does it but Steph is a two time MVP three time NBA championship you know it's okay when 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 Chef do the little shimmy but I was like come on Trey you got you got to you got to win something first before you start doing all that shimmy and because you get humble real fast in this league and you know sure enough they at they back at home. Um, in regards to Monty Williams, I, I think he's he's a great coach. And I'm so happy for him. Um, I always go back uh, in regards to Monty back when he was with uh, New Orleans on the first go round, and I was watching a I forget what was the show I was watching on NBA TV, but they were covering Monty Williams talking to the players, and he wasn't talking to them about basketball. He was talking to them about life. And just things that, you know, they need to be aware of as far as, you know, just entourages and money and, and different things like that. So he was just giving them game as opposed to just saying, you know, my job is coach. Anything that goes on outside his basketball court really don't, you know, have no concern to me. But when you're talking about a group of young black men and him being a leader of those young black men, I love the fact that he took it far beyond his job as a, as a basketball coach and was giving them, those young guys those life lessons. So I always have a, 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 a high regard for Monty Williams. You know, plus, you know, anytime it's a black head coach, I got to go for the, for the black head coach because, you know, we don't always get those positions. We don't even always get the, 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 a fair shot at getting those positions. So anytime it's a, it's a brother Agreed. at the helm, I, I'm, I'm all for that. I got to support that. And again, you know, C- CP3 been in the league a long time. He's one of my favorite players, one of the top players. So, you know, I, I'm I'm happy for him. At this point, you better get the job done, though. Especially if Giannis does not play, you have to. There's no excuse for the Suns to not win this this uh, this series. Um, where does that leave 
uh, Chris Paul, though, uh, uh, top five, top ten all time if he wins the championship? And what do you have him now? What do you what do you have him ranked now amongst point guards? And then if he does win, where does he go? In no particular order, these are my top five. So um Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, Jason Kidd, um Steph Curry. Um, LeBron James. <laughs> So we just gonna throw. Look. I mean, I'm not even mad at you. You know I'm a LeBron guy, so I'm not even mad at you throwing LeBron in there. But th- let's let's put somebody in there that that was actually listed at the point guard for the bulk of their career. Let's keep LeBron out. I'm with you on that. I'm I'm, I'm all for that. Anytime somebody shot LeBron, and I'm all for that. But let's put somebody who who has had that PG under the the, the title for the bulk of their career to to replace LeBron. Um. Well, I'll add this, you know, LeBron on NBA Live 2004 was the, the starting point guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers. All right, Gordon. you know what? I got him as the starting point guard right now on my team, so I'm going to give you that. I'm not going to put you on the spot. Where's Chris Paul at? He's in my top ten. So the, the further part of that list is uh, John Stockton. Okay. Um, Mark Jackson. Chris Paul. Okay. And I, I said Isaiah, right? My top five. Yeah, yeah, Isaiah's in the top five. So I said John. So Mark Jackson, John Stockton, Chris Paul. Um does now so does he does Chris Paul jump into your top five now? No. Oh, so he hasn't I don't, I don't really I don't I really hate these top five, top tens. Top ten is more comfortable because I think when you say top five. Then when you leave a Stockton or you leave a Chris Paul out, then people are mad um, because I, I, and, and I think that's when you start looking at big point guards like we acknowledge Magic Johnson as a point guard. Um, and then you learn you run into people who look at Isaiah Thomas and they dislike him. So they won't put him in that conversation. And I, I'm just not I'm not one of those guys. Yeah, I, I think even if you put Chris Paul, OK, he wins the championship, then what? I don't look at it like that. It's, it's guys I I enjoy watching. So yeah. for me, I, I don't I don't necessarily look at it like like Pistol Pete. I know people always put him up there, but I didn't watch him I, as a kid. I, I watched video of him. Yeah. Um, Isaiah, I was young, but I but I was but I had watched enough video, and you know, my stepdad being from Chicago, they grew up together down the street. So it's like I I have a appreciation for it. And I also saw Magic try to come back and be like LeBron size, trying to out rebound Magic, or try to out rebound Dennis Rodman. It was, it was a slam poster I had in my room. So like, I, I think like I, I get, I think I would get a pass in, in a court of public opinion for that. So I, I'm still having a difficult time. I think if I had to kind of round out that top eight, top ten, I think I put Steph Curry in my top five, and I think he's earned that, even though people yeah. front on him because they feel like he's his daddy's child and he has a silver spoon and but. You know, people also look at Kobe in that way, and Kobe Bryant grew up a second generation basketball player. So, that, um, Michael Jordan kids ain't in the NBA, right? And they both play college. They play college basketball. It don't always work out yeah. like that. Where you, just because you was in the NBA, your son gonna be great. It doesn't always work out that way. There's guys that don't even play basketball. You know that uh, in the NBA that have kids that don't play basketball at all. So I don't even, I don't even go by that. Um, mm-hmm. I will say this: I'm gonna give you my top five. Um, Magic is is number one. Steph, I got at number two. Isaiah, I got at at number three. Um, and then I got uh Jason Kidd at four, and I got Stockton at five with Chris Paul at six. If Chris Paul wins the championship this year, I got to push him up into the top five and take Stockton out. I'm sorry for you Jazz fans that want me to leave him in the top five, but I can't do it. Um, you know, especially. With Chris Paul playing at the level that he's playing right now to win a championship, I'd, I'd have to put him, push him up on my list into the top five because he's, you know, he's still balling. You know, even with Jason Kidd, we look at Jason Kidd when he won the championship with the Mavericks it was a little bit later on. It wasn't prime Jason Kidd that that got that ring, even though he put in work, but it wasn't. The Nets, you know, what I'm saying Jason Kidd when he was putting up crazy numbers. Or Dallas in his first thing. That, yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Or, or Dallas in his, in his first thing. 
Um, so I I, th- I would push him up. Uh, but I, I'm excited. I, actually, I do think that the series is actually going to be really competitive without Giannis being there. I hope he does come back because I, ju- I feel really bad for Giannis because it's like, damn, the team finally gets over the hump. Um, and you ain't there. And you, and you ain't there. And oh, that's 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 so tough. You know, it's so messed up for Giannis. Um, because it was a, a freak thing. It wasn't. You know what I mean? Like. It's just a freak play coming down, and that happens so much where guys just come down on somebody's foot or get tripped or something, some little minor thing like that, and then boom, now you're missing a, a, a lot of time. So yeah. I hope I hope he can come back at some point in the finals. I don't know. I'm I'm pretty sure he's gonna try to come back if he can. Just you know, just I think just the competitor, you gotta try it at least if it don't. If it don't happen, it don't happen. But I think he's going to try. Just because even the fact that, you know, you brought up him coming back out, you know, during the game he got hurt in. And I was, I was like, hold up. He about to go <laughs> go back in the game because he walked out. You know, so maybe, you know what I'm saying, we're going to throw the prayer hands up. Maybe he can, you know, get back, get at least get at least in two games, you know, in the finals, play at least in two. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to the NBA finals either way. If I can, the last two. And I know it make, makes me sound like a hypocrite because of one of the guys I'm going to name, but the last two on my list, nine and ten, would be Russell Westbrook and Oscar Robertson. Oscar Robertson, to me, while I didn't watch him play, I have spent enough time around him hosting an event that he uh, was honored at, and I realized his impact after specifically uh, what Russell Westbrook um, accomplished this year. But I'll add this. If it was not for Oscar Robertson, a lot of players in today's game would not have some of the liberties and the freedoms that they have today, specifically as it relates to free agency um, and, and the Retired Players Association, which is a union for players once they're done, um, as well as, you know, the um, the, the, the uh, Players Association union that is current. So um, that that rounds out my top 10. I'd probably, if, if, if I watched Oscar Robertson, like, at play at all I probably have him at four on my list but I wanted to keep it with guys that I actually saw uh saw a play in the, playing the game because I think that's kind of that's a little bit unfair to throw if not the Oscar then maybe Steve Nash Steve, Steve Nash is up there as, as as well um and I listen I love Westbrook man I'm I'm, I'm a fan of Westbrook shoot mm-hmm. I'm actually like you know I know they're talking about all the different trade rumors and stuff for next season I'm actually okay with Westbrook if they if somehow the Lakers would get Westbrook in a trade. I think he'd do very well next to LeBron and AD. So I'm actually I mean I'm even okay with that. So you got him in your top ten. I, I got him in my top ten as as well. So you know what I'm saying shout out to shout out to to, to Westbrook. Um, I know he gets a lot of flack, but you know it is it is what it is. Another person we got to show some love to uh, Nate McMillan. Got extended. Uh, he deserved it. Atlanta. He did an amazing job again. Uh, I don't think too many people picked Atlanta to 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 go to the Eastern Conference Finals um, at the beginning of the season, or at the middle, or even at the start of the playoffs. I don't think so many people had them going to the Eastern Conference Finals. But uh, Nate McMillan and he dealt with uh, losses to two of his uh, his his starters uh, with uh, Reddish and uh, DeAndre Hunter. Going down early in the season, I know Cam Reddish came back, but you know he got. I think the last two games he he was able to play in, but you know he was missing two of his his guys. And DeAndre Hunter is, is a, a a very good defensive player. I'm sure they could have you know used him. And then I mean we saw what Cam Reddish was doing. He was coming in and shooting the lights out a little something something in these past two games. So I'm sure they would have loved to have both of them for this playoff run. Um, but either way, them going to the Eastern Conference Finals was enough to, you know, to, to show that, you know, they may put some work in, coaching. Now, keeping that team together, though, moving forward might be a little bit tricky, though, because they got a couple of different contracts that are coming up. John Collins, for for sure, for one. Yes. Um, he turned down that $90 million deal, and he, you know, was definitely inquired about by other teams, namely the Boston Celtics uh, before the trade deadline this year, so... Um, definitely somebody that um, this, they need to focus on. Glad that they were able to sign Nate McMillan to a four-year deal. And thankfully, Lloyd Pierce is on the Indiana Pacers uh, coaching staff as an assistant, as well as USA Basketball with, with Greg Popovich as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, listen, congrats again to, to Coach Nate. Um, have you been keeping up with what's going on with this whole uh, Rachel Nichols uh, situation? 
and the leaked audio. So I always, I sometimes I, like I have issues with leaked audio. You know what I mean? Just because I'm like, I I understand that you said it, you said it. That's how you, that's how you really feel. But at the same time, you know, we got to have some type of privacy barriers. Um, I mean, and and to be honest with you, I. I don't even feel like what she said was was really that bad. Um, she, she said uh, Maria got to to do the finals because she's black. I, you know, and I she's kind of I feel like she's stuck between the rock and the hard place because she obviously she's not gonna deal with the same issues as as a, as a, a person of color in this field. Right. However. She's also a woman in this field, so she's she so she's going. I'm sure she has dealt with her fair share of things, hurdles, you know, along the way as well. And it's you know, and I and I can understand where she's coming from because it's like you know, you bust your ass, and those are moments that as a as as anybody in media, those are uh, one of those moments where when you you get to cover those, it's just, it's a whole different ball game. So I can definitely understand where she's coming from. But then, you know what? On the other side of that, I look at it, and it's like, you know what? You know, I know I get it. You've been through some stuff, but I'm pretty sure, you know, uh, Maria's been through some stuff as well as, you know, she because she has to deal with, I'm a woman. I'm also a person of color in a field that's, you know, still dominated by our white male counterparts. And listen, and again, I'm okay. Yeah, even if, even if that was the case, if y'all, you know, if she got that because of, you know, the color of her skin, listen, I feel like we are owed so much that, hey, it is what it is. Well, I, I think as it relates to Rachel and what she said um, as a woman, um, <clears throat> context and framing of that context, I kind of feel like she, it's a no win situation anyway, because one, um, the audio was recorded from a file that was already in the studio. Um, and, and so people can frame that however they want to frame it. But the fact of the matter remains, um, it was a conversation about Me Too or, or excuse me, a conversation about Black Lives Matters last year in a world where you as Rachel Nichols are the face of a television show with ESPN, particularly the jump that people look at my age group in the same way that my grandmother's generation look at judge Judy and the NBA is 75% African American. Um, she's somebody that's become a trusted voice of the NBA that players like talking to. Yeah. Um, and so I just think that um, with that comes responsibility. And I also think, um, I think that um I think that at the end of the day for African Americans, it's a it's a it's a a field where um, we have to be 20 times as better. We can't be wrong, we can't mess up. And um, it's not designed for us to be um, su successful. Um, I, I think that um I think that we have to work hard. And I think that when we work hard, we should be rewarded for it. And I think that at the end of the day. Uh, Maria Taylor does seek Stephen A. Smith uh, uh, payment, and as as it's as it's related to what you know Andrew Marchand wrote in, in the New York Post, um, I'm not sure how you quantify that as it relates to in comparison to Stephen A. But this is what I'll say: I think that she's multifaceted. I think that she has the ability to do many different things, whether it's sideline reporting, hosting podcasting, writing, um, and, and hosting a pretty powerful show that, that has you know, Adrian Wojnarowski, uh, Jalen Rose, and Jay Williams uh, at, 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 at sitting you know, at, at, at a, in a studio. So yeah. I think it's demeaning when you kind of downplay somebody's con contribution to a network based upon um, the color of their skin when their impact is... Um, is uh, is, is noticeable. So, yeah, I, I don't, I, I've met, I've met Rachel. I've been in functions with Rachel. Um, she's been kind to me, but that has nothing to do with the subject at hand. 
and I still don't know all the facts yet, but I only know what, what's been reported. Um, and But I know that Maria Taylor is, is talented and, you know, I, I hope that she gets the money that she wants because um, uh, I'm rooting for everybody that's black. Hey, listen, that's why I said I, like, I, I'm okay with it because I know that there were so many opportunities that we didn't get because we are people of color. So anytime we get those opportunities to be in those spaces, you know, the, the anytime you get to the finals or the Super Bowl or the Stanley Cup uh, uh, finals or the, or the World Series, when you get to to those spaces, those are one of those, those are those are career attributes. When you get to cover those events, so and and again, she's someone who has been putting in the work. To, you know, so she definitely would deserve that opportunity, and 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 respectfully, Rachel Nichols could deserve that opportunity as well too, because she puts in a lot of work. Um, she's been doing this for for a long time as well. But but you know, I th- but I think I think that we're not speaking about Rachel Nichols right now. We're speaking about what was like until you see Maria Taylor say something demeaning about Rachel Nichols. And she she won't. For, for all no but i'm saying if somebody caught her on camera saying something and they recorded it then we'd have to bring her oh yeah 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 really as well we don't have that so for all attempts and purposes she didn't you know so Absolutely. like Absolutely. rachel 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 got caught so you know it, it's an unfortunate situation um i'm cognizant of the fact that stuff that i say does get picked up um but i will just say that i hope that it works out for maria because she will be a free agent um, in the next couple of weeks. And so, you know, I, I've heard that Amazon is a, is a company that may have interest in her. And um, I, I just hope that she she gets paid. And, and I hope that um, that the situation gets resolved. And, and, and I'll add this and I want to be done with it, is that um, I think this is a teachable moment for rising journalists as it relates to um, the microphone being on. And, I, I, Mike, I, Mike, you gotta know, and, and and also being cognizant of when you have turned off your um your 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 camera, particularly as we're home and using Zoom, uh, and and also knowing who your allies are, not just in race, but also who's in the newsroom as it relates to whether or not someone you made them made them mad at the the water cooler and they decided, Hey, I'm going to send this off and get you in trouble. I don't know those specifics, but those are like I said, those are just lessons to just the whole puzzle. Absolutely. And let me say this, you know, I'm going to throw this out there to Maria, you know, I know in a couple of weeks, you know, you're going to be looking for a new spot. Real fans, real talk is here. We probably can't offer you the same amount of money that you can get from an ESPN or Amazon or one of them. But you know we can we can hold our own with with, with any of these uh these sports shows out there. You know that that that, that do they think talking. So you know just just keep that in your mind, Marie. Just keep that just a little back in your mind, just so you know we out here. We we have a spot here for you at Real Fans Real Talk. I'll make sure when I put this clip up, I'm gonna add you in the clip so you know that anytime you want to come to Real Fans Real Talk, there's a space for you right here. You know, Verizon, uh, 43, 8 to 9 p.m. You know, we in New- listen, New York is the biggest market anyway, so this might be where you just need to be. It might get you a little extra boost, you know, for the next uh, stop in your journey. But that's neither here nor, nor there. A um, couple of guys that, that may be on the trade block, uh, one of which lost to Trey Young. Uh, a lot of people say he was scared to shoot. I kind of feel like he was a little bit scared to shoot as well. Um, ben Simmons, what's his trade value right now? Well, Philly says that they're not trading them or making a stance that that's what it is. Um, I think that if if um, something were to come about, I think the best fit is Portland. Um, I think that um, you'd have to include a package that includes C.J. McCollum for starters. Um, I also think the Golden State Warriors are an ingenious fit. If you paid attention to my podcast, Scoopy Radio, Last year, I had Rashad Phillips on, and he discussed uh, a three-team trade that was being discussed um, at the uh, draft last year where um, the Warriors, the Toronto Raptors, and the Sixers had discussed uh, a move uh, where uh, there would have been, um, you know, Ben Simmons going to the Warriors, LaMelo Ball potentially going to the Raptors. Um 
and Kyle Lowry going to the Philadelphia 76ers. Kyle Lowry is a free agent. It's offseason. And, um, you know, as a courtesy, you'd hope that, okay, if he goes somewhere, they can potentially commence a sign and trade. Uh, And if that were to happen, you know, teams like the Lakers, teams like the the, the Sixers do come to mind. He does not have to uh, grant that courtesy. So, you know, I I think another team worth uh, the price of admission um, may be, you know, Buddy Hill. You know, the Sixers revisiting a Buddy Hill situation with the Sacramento Kings. Uh, you know, it, and where you ship Ben Simmons to the, the, the Kings, you know, in exchange for uh, Buddy Hill. And you'd have to add some other fixings to to the to the Wendy's burger uh, through the fixings cup. But, you know, ultimately, I, I think, um, you know, you, you, you weigh out all trade options. The Pelicans could be a, a potential destination as well. So, you know, the Pelicans are still looking for their next move as it relates to Charles Lee. Uh, or uh, Willie Green, who's an assistant with the the, the uh, Phoenix Suns. Those are two candidates. Uh, Becky Hammond should be. I'm not sure if the market is there yet, because I think ultimately, in my mind, Becky Hammond ultimately takes over for Greg Popovich, I feel. Um, we'll see. But, um, you know, as it relates to Ben Simmons, I think there are some teams that'll, that'll take interest. I think the Minnesota Timberwolves are another option as well. So a lot to consider there. Out of those teams, I like, uh, Golden State a lot just because I, I think that Ben Simmons can I think he would be a a I don't want to say and I'm saying this respectfully I don't want to say a better version of Draymond Green but as far as just the abilities that Ben Simmons has I think he's a better rebounder and a better passer than Draymond so I think that if you put him there I think that'll be a great combination and then it's you know you kind of you can we don't have to worry about the fact that you're not going to shoot because you got the best two shooters possibly of all time. All you got to do is get them the ball, play defense, and rebound. Um, so I think that would probably be the best spot. If if he goes to, to Portland for CJ, does that mean that Dame still stays in Portland as well, or do you think that Dame may want to get up out of Portland either way? Um, from all the intents and purposes, uh, I believe that Damian Lillard wants to play alongside a fellow all-star. Um, so I, I think it just depends on what all they're lo- looking to do to, you know, help him. I think there's, I think Damian Lillard's situation in Portland is so very similar uh, to LeBron's first stint in Cleveland, where nobody wanted to go to Cleveland. Um, I've never been to Portland, but I've been to Cleveland before. I had fun in Cleveland, but I also had fun in Cleveland because it was set LeBron's second go round. Um, and, you know, that was the Kyrie Irving, yeah. uh, Evan Love, LeBron James era. And it was stuff to do uh, in Cleveland. I had fun. I had a lot of fun. But <laughs> Portland, to me, is not that same draw. Um, so you'd have to find a way to get a Ben Simmons there to get him to stay. Um, if he doesn't, if he forces a trade, because he's got some years left on his contract. Like, that's the thing that people uh, don't consider. Um Portland does not have to trade Damian Lillard. Yeah, at all. I think he has three years left on, on, on this deal. Right. So, like, they don't have to trade him. And um, they could hold on to him and make his life miserable if they wanted to. Um, but I also think that I don't see that happen because I think he's done so much uh, as a key cog uh, for Portland. So, um, if – He's moved. To me, the Boston Celtics make the most sense, more so than the Knicks. The Knicks would have to give up a lot. And I feel like you've done so much to bring winning culture back to this organization. Why go through that again? So, I said the same thing yesterday. You'd have to give up too much to get them, and then you'd be right back to square one. Because the guys that you have to give up that run. Remember that show, Square One on Public Access? Square One. <laughs> yeah. da, da, da. Right back, right back, square one. So it wouldn't even make sense. Is there any? Is there a slim hope of a chance that Dame could end up with the Lakers? I don't see it, and I think that people um, people assume that based upon where Daniel Lillard was in LA. Um, I think that the Lakers don't have enough to entice Portland. I mean, the thing I feel like. Um, the two assets that the that the Lakers have this offseason um, that are that will be attractive to some teams, some, 
is Kyle Kuzma's contract and Taylor and Horton Tucker. Yes. But that's not um, enough for Dame, no. That's by far. Mm-hmm. Not, some- at all. not at all. And I feel like that's where you start looking at Russell Westbrook and the Washington Wizards. Yep. Which again, that- I, I, I'm okay with because I like Westbrook. I'm a fan of Westbrook. So I'd be yeah, okay. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, I think that's that's who they're going after. Um, and I think that if not, I feel like Russell Westbrook is is one. And I think I think Kyle Lowry's one A. Um, I, I, I like think, Westbrook, but I'm sorry. All due respect to Kyle Lowry, I would take Russell Westbrook over Kyle Lowry. I'm sorry. But you got to get him. Yeah, so, well, yes. Yeah, liking, liking and getting are two different things. You may like the baddest chick in the club, but that doesn't mean you're going to get her. That is, that is, that is true. But you now, might be getting the Usher's number at the bathroom. Do the Lakers have enough to get Westbrook? Um, I think that looking at Washington and looking at um, – their coaching situation, uh, whether they're going to go with Wes Until Jr. or Sam Cassell or someone else. I feel like Russell Westbrook is going to want to have a proclivity to be somewhere where he can win and where he can be comfortable. Uh, he being LeBron's teammate makes sense. And then with all the discussion about Scotty Brooks um, potentially becoming an assistant coach with the Lakers, mm. Scotty Brooks and, and Russell Westbrook have that relationship. So, um, I, I, and I don't think it's, I don't think that if he, if Scotty Brooks were hired, that is the coincidence. Like, I don't feel like they're bringing him in just to lure Russell Westbrook. Like, I think it's just a good coaching hire. Yeah. Um, but it, it doesn't hurt that. Exactly. I think those are mutually exclusive. I, I just want to say that because I think oftentimes people say, oh, well, because he's a coach and you could you could have people were saying the same thing about Jason Kidd when Jason Kidd came to the Lakers as an assistant and people thought Giannis was going to go there. Like it was like, well, yeah, no, he's no. dead. So that's not always the case. I believe that in this case, if the Lakers are able to get him, it's because um, they're able to make the right move. Taylor Horton Tucker and Kyle Kuzma make sense. Contavious Caldwell Pope. Throw him in there too. You can, who, who, any, listen, anybody outside of LeBron James and Anthony Davis, if you want to throw them in there, I'm okay with that. Right. So that that's why I think this offseason, like Kyle Lowry could walk. Um, I think that to, to he should he should try to help the Raptors if if to potentially commence some sort of sign trade. Just like LeBron, when he left. Cleveland, he did. It was a sign and trade. Yeah. It was he left Cleveland in, in 2010, which that sign and trade actually ended up helping Cleveland anyway because those picks were used to get Tristan Thompson and uh, Kyrie Irving in 2011. So, you know, they still it, burned his jersey though. So, you know, they didn't, they didn't know how much he helped them on the, even on the way out. But you know, that's, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> you know how that go? Yeah, people got you know. Sometimes these fans out here be doing the most. Um, Really quick, uh, Olympics are are, are, are are very close by the qualifier. We got a shout out, uh, Luca messed around and caught a triple double. Uh, got the got the squad got the squad to to qualify for the Olympics. Um, is there any team do you feel like that can any country that can compete with this USA uh, team? Because remember this, you know, I know KD is there, but a lot of the other heavy hitters around the league aren't there, and then a lot, you know, now we're seeing a lot more international superstars. So a lot of the guys that are top guys in the league, you know, wind up are going to their, their home countries to play. So is there any country that you feel like can come close to taking out this team? Not sure. I have not watched a lick of um, international qualifying games. So I, I would be the wrong person to ask. Um, but just that face value based upon just the past, um, Puerto Rico, uh, France, mm-hmm. Canada, uh, definitely would fit the bill in that regard. Because they so, have a, they have a lot of NBA guys. There's a lot of guys from uh, Canada playing in the league right now, so they definitely got a lot of NBA talent out there. Um, I mean, I, I feel like Spain is should all is always like in there in the conversation because um, they usually have a lot of uh, NBA talent as well. Um, I think you know we're still is it's it's getting they're they're gaining ground, 
But there's just still so many great NBA American born NBA players. This there's they're still the majority. You know what I mean? But we are getting a lot more of international talents that are become wanna becoming great players. So I'm not I'm not saying they're gonna catch the team USA anytime soon, but these teams are getting better and they're nothing to play with because you don't want another another situation like Spain when you're supposed to, to 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 dominate the rest of the world in basketball at least at the Olympics, um, and then you mess around and, and drop the ball on this one. I'm glad KD is is playing. Um, I think honestly, you know, Luca playing in the Olympics. I think this is actually going to be a big boost for Luca because one of the things that you know that people spoke about as far as Luca last season was that he didn't come in 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 basketball shape. So the fact that he's going to be playing in the, in the Olympics this, this summer, I think he's going to come back, and then next season we'll see what we what was projected to see of Luca this season, him being an MVP uh, candidate. They still got to do a couple of tweaks to their roster um, as well. Um, but while we're on the Olympics, uh, Shikari Richardson, uh, she tested positive for marijuana. Um, I, I'm 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 actually proud of her for. You know, speaking her truth and taking accountability um, for it. I'm also a person who understands the health uh, aspect to marijuana. I know the Olympic drug testing is a lot stricter than uh, you know what we would have here in this country. And again, she was in a place where it was legal when she uh, when she used it. I want to point that out. Um, it was definitely legal for her to, to, to use marijuana in that situation. She was dealing with the passing of her mom. Um, I want to shout out to Sports World, especially, you know, our, our black athletes who have really come to the forefront, and entertainers, our black athletes and entertainers who have been very outspoken uh, in regards to 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 uh, Shikari's situation. Um, just, you know, I, I love when we come together, man. It's, it's nothing like it. When we come and we speak up for our own I hope that something can be done so that she can run because clearly she deserves to Definitely. be a, a, in the Olympics running for for the United States of America. So I'm looking forward to I want to see her. So I hope something can be can be done. But when you saw the situation, what were your thoughts? A rule is a rule. And I think also there are rules that can be amended. And I think we've seen that over time. Uh, we've seen it. Uh more recently in the last couple of weeks, I'll leave that topic off the table because it's not sports, but um, I, I think ultimately when it comes down to it, um, she's serving that suspension and hopefully she can participate in the relays. But, um, you know, I think that marijuana over the years has proven that it's not on the same level as level one drugs uh, like heroin uh, and, and other uh, more addictive agents. and um, But I think that this is a, a case study on uh, potentially uh, modifying archaic rulings on drugs. So I don't think we're going to be able to play jailhouse lawyer today, but I think this is a catalyst for, you know, to, to re-examining those rules. And, you know, here we are now. Absolutely. And, you know, I got I, I like uh, Gabby, uh, Gabrielle Union's uh, tweet, you know, Listen, man. You know, smoking a smoking a little doobie ain't never make nobody run faster or jump higher. If anything, mm-hmm. you you might have been asleep before you hit the finish line. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's something that needs to be talked about. I, I you know, the problem is, <coughs> excuse me, is that worldwide weed is looked at uh, differently than it is here in the United States, and you know, we're not even. Of in uh, uh, in complete agreement in all fifty states as far as you know marijuana the, the usage and recreation and medical so I I get it but it's definitely a conversation that needs to be had especially when you look at two of the greatest Olympians of all time are both known marijuana users I'm speaking of Michael Phelps I'm speaking of uh, Usain Usain Bolt. Um, so I think that it's definitely something that we're going to be talking about a lot more moving forward, um, which, you know, and again, it sucks, you know, for Shikari in this situation, but this is going to be the catalyst that brings that conversation to the forefront moving forward. 
So mm -hmm. it, it definitely, you know, is going to have some type of, of, of positivity because we're going to have that discussion. Um, and, you know, we'll see if it, if it winds up coming off of the, the band list. Um, but, you know, again, that's a conversation we're going to be having down the road. Lastly, with the Olympics, uh, swimming caps, man, we're talking about swimming caps. You know they didn't, they didn't want they didn't want the sisters with that with that naturally that that beautiful hair that that my 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 sisters my queens my black queens have they they they, they tried to get a little specific they wanted a swimming cap that was for them it was turned down by the Olympics something about it didn't go along with the uniforms or something like that um, listen I, I I look at I I look at you know to 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 my sisters that will be swimming and competing in the Olympics. Go out there and bust that ass anyway. Show them it don't even matter if you got that damn cap on or not. You come to take home gold medals, and that's what y'all going to do. So do y'all mother thing. You said it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I got to say about that, man. Oh, uh, man. All right, man. Listen, Scoop, I didn't, I didn't hold you hostage for long enough. but just, um, so and, and we already know the, your official pick, though, is, is Suns. How many games? Six. Suns and six. All right, I'm gonna put myself on the on the hot seat right now. Ah, I'm going. I'm going Suns in. Ah, I want. All right, I'm I'm going Suns in seven. I'm sorry. I gotta go. I gotta go seven. I just feel. I feel like. I feel like we might get a get a miracle uh, mm -hmm. reemergence of Giannis, and it's gonna take this thing to seven. But I think ultimately CP3 will get the job done. And I am I am rooting for for Chris Paul in this situation. I'm rooting for Chris Paul, Cliff Paul, <laughs> the whole State Farm. Hold <laughs> on this one, uh, Scoop. Final thought before we get up out of here. Nothing. Well, listen, I'm 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 I'm, 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 I'm gonna say this. Make sure y'all locked in with, with with Scoop B, NBA Insider, one of the best doing it right now. If you want to be in the know about basketball and what's going on in the locker rooms and, and in the practice and all of that stuff. Scoop got all the answers. He got all the scoops. He got the connection to everybody. And they finally giving this man his flowers like they supposed don't, to. Don't, don't believe him. <laughs> <I don't laughs> don't believe Check out Space Jam 2 July 16th. Oh, that's a fact. I'm, I'm definitely going to be watching uh, Space Jam 2. Uh, let me shout out the sponsors really quick. Shout out to Kmart. Shout out to the Rosado Firm, uh, Petro Home Services, and of course, Soundview Liquors. They always keep the ball stocked for us. Um, we appreciate you guys. Make sure you are following on us on all our social media, Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fan Talk, Facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk, and subscribe to that YouTube channel because that's where you get all the exclusive interviews. You know, we be having people that come up here, they don't know how to speak without cursing, so we got to go straight to the YouTube and to the website for that. So you YouTube.com forward slash for the fans productions. And of course, if you're not in the New York City area, do not worry. You can still watch every Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. Just go to realfansrealtalk.com. Click on that red button right there on the homepage and you can watch from anywhere in the world. With that being said, for myself, Trip Young, the man, the myth, the legend, Brandon Scoop B. Robinson, we up out of here. Peace. Real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Sing your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets it's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9 For the older folks, so even if you younger No matter what sport, this show, we got it covered It's filmed live in the middle of BK So ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays What's up guys, I'm Emerald Marie And be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com